This recent annual report of software engineers' salaries shows just how much you can make without even a degree. But I know this can seem a little unreal, and you're probably thinking, do I need to be super smart? What would it take? Is this possible for me? If yes, how? What should I do to prepare? I practiced and interviewed a lot since 2019. I interviewed at FANG and FinTech Unicorns, and I failed a lot before I slowly started to pass interviews. And now I have even interviewed others myself. So I got you. And I'm going to tell you why you don't need to be special or a competitive programmer to land offers at FANG or high paying big tech companies. But first, what do you exactly need to do to get into those companies? The best example for this is Google. The interview process at Google is a call with a recruiter followed by a technical phone screen and then an on-site which is three technical interviews and one behavioral interview. This is very similar to what interviewing at other top paying companies will look like. There are multiple technical rounds and on average they are roughly the same difficulty. You might think that getting into these companies takes something special because well they have such high pay bands but no with practice, an average engineer can make it, including Google. The proof is simple. Google is large. It has more than 27,000 software engineers alone. It cannot cherry pick when it operates at that scale. Many of the other high paying tech companies also employ thousands of software engineers. Microsoft, even though it pays relatively less, employs more than 100,000 engineers. This is more than all the computer science undergrads in all the universities in the US combined. But even with that said, during college when I just heard about technical interviews and started preparing, a couple of weeks passed and I was still not able to solve questions that are asked at the companies that are on those top paying charts. So I thought that that's it. It takes something special and I just had to be smarter. I would keep practicing regardless for the interviews that I did have. After a couple of months later, I would sometimes try solving questions that Google and Meta would ask and I would sometimes get them right. A couple of months later, I would get them right more often. Then I realized that I just assumed that practicing is a matter of a couple of weeks or a few months. And I thought that if I can't get good enough during that time, I'm just not good enough. And this is where I and everyone else I know got it wrong. You would spend 15, 20, 30 years as a software engineer. Why would you dedicate only two months to reach to a company you would want to work at for the long term? Instead, spend two years doing that to make the most out of the following 20 years. The nice thing is that it's not a full-time or a part-time commitment. You work as an engineer meanwhile and gain professional experience while you practice daily for an hour, sometimes two, along the way. It makes sense because you probably also heard that many engineers at Google or other high paying companies didn't pass the interviews on their first try. Some are really good, some get lucky, and many others just need to try over a longer period of time. The time horizon you assumed for preparation if you were like me was a few months at most. And it's wrong. When a career is so much longer, just keep preparing and there will be no large high paying tech company you won't be able to crack. If you can't see that and think it's something you're not good enough for, you might be having just another form of the imposter syndrome. In the description, I've linked a video that will show you how to do that preparation over the long term. It's the best way I found to improve on technical questions for interviews. It's about starting with solutions and then trying to solve the questions. So you go topic by topic and choose questions to learn their solutions and only then you try to solve questions on your own on that topic. So you want to follow that for just a longer period. When you give yourself more time, you will see that slowly you are able to solve more and more questions that are asked at companies like Google. Even if you think you're so far behind after only a couple of weeks of preparing. So you are set with a plan to end up with an offer from a top paying company. But there are two additional things to consider to make the most out of each offer. First, negotiate, even if you have only one offer. I was also scared that my offer will be resigned, but companies do expect you to negotiate. I just finished interviewing at a startup that builds tools for data engineers. When I got the offer, the recruiter called to chat about the details. I decided to try negotiation for the first time, and with a shaky voice, I just asked for a higher number. He told me that he would ask and get back to me, and a day later, he came back with an offer that was 7.1% higher than the initial offer. It's not that I know how to negotiate, I never read a guide or learned how. I just tried asking politely without sounding greedy. The next thing is job hopping and there are two types. One is where you just change jobs 
every two to three years to increase your salary. When you work, you get annual raises, but these usually tend to be three to 5%. When you change companies, that increase can be 10 to 20% instead. This is usually what you would do if you thought about maximizing your total compensation early on in more junior roles. And working at different companies early on is not just better for compensation, but also for your overall growth. You get to experience more than one team or engineering culture, and you can better learn what work is more interesting to you. Later, there is another type, promotion hopping. Usually, being promoted internally to the next level is difficult and long. There is a committee and you need to show that you've performed beyond your level for a long time. Instead, you can job hop and then just interview for the next level. Coding rounds don't get any harder. It's only system design that you will be expected to know more, and there is much you learn on that on the job anyway. Something that becomes more important at that point is your communication. Coding peaks after mid to senior levels. Beyond those, you won't be coding more. You will be working across teams. Communicating in and out of meetings will become the main responsibility. There is a lot of hate towards technical interviews, but think about it. It's the same thing across companies that you can practice and get good at. And then you always have access to stability, high paychecks, and lots of options. So maybe we should be grateful that it's like that and not something random. And with that said, I hope that now you don't think of preparation as only a short-term thing and see how you can work your way up towards those high salaries as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.